This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and today we're going to look at the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 7.0. Could they get more numbers in there? I don't know. Anyway, this is actually the better version than you might be familiar with. There's the Wi-Fi only version that you can get at a whole lot of different retail stores, and then there's this one. This is the Sprint model. It has a faster CPU, more RAM, more storage, and we're going to look at it now. So here it is, the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 7.0. 7.0 means 7.0 inches for the display size. Now, the Wi-Fi model of this, the 8.0 and the 10.1 inch model came out a while ago, but now Sprint has it available on their network with LTE 4G for data, not for voice. Of course, you can use things like Skype and, and Google Hangouts and talk for for doing VoIP kind of things, but really it's a data-only tablet, but they've made some nice improvements on this, so pretty excited about that. First off, 11-ounce tablet, again, 7-inch display, 0.4 inches thick. It's not the skinniest tablet on the block. Some of them are, of course, about a third of an inch, but the smaller you make them, actually, you got to fit the stuff in there somewhere, so it's harder to make them as thin. So you can see right here we have a micro SD card slot. That's our SIM card slot there for Sprint's LTE network kind of faux metal surround. No surprise here, it looks like all the other contemporary tab models, kind of like a giant Galaxy S4 phone and like the other tab tablets. Up top we have our combo headphone jack right there. Volume and power on the side and this is the IR window for the IR blaster. That's your TV AV remote control feature which is on just about every Samsung Galaxy product these days. And micro USB at the bottom and little stereo speakers too. It's plastic, it's Samsung, no surprise there. I don't think it looks too bad though. Pretty shiny back here, but white doesn't show fingerprints as much, which is nice. We have a 3 megapixel camera on the back. Generally speaking, the Tab 3 line is not a high-end line. The Note has become Samsung's high-end line, so don't look for fancy specs here. So just your basic 3 megapixel on the back, which takes, as you can imagine, pretty mediocre pictures and video. And we have a 1.3 megapixel camera up front, which is probably more important for those of you who want to do things like video chat, for example. 1.3 megapixels is adequate, not as good as those 2 megapixel cameras that we see on some higher-end Galaxy products, obviously, but it's not too bad either. Physical clicky home button right here, our menu button, our back button, and here we have Android 4.2 ice cream sandwich which with, of course, Samsung's TouchWiz software. Pretty heavy-handed customization of the UI, but for those of you who are accustomed to Samsung products, you probably actually say, hey, I like that. I feel comfy with that. And surprisingly, since the Tab 3 line doesn't have the fastest CPUs on the block, we still get the split window feature over here. You can turn that on. By default, it was turned off, and then you can just throw, say, gallery over here. We don't have any pictures. How sad. And then we want our internet web browser right here. So. That's a feature we like from Samsung. It also has the Smart Stay feature. It uses the front camera to keep an eye on you, and if it thinks you're watching, it will not turn off the screen. Always nice. We have the Samsung typical controls up here. Quick access to all your wireless radios, screen rotation, blocking mode, which is their funny way of saying quiet time, basically. So, say from midnight to 6, you don't want this thing binging and bonking and all that kind of thing. You can use blocking mode to do that. And you can get to all settings by tapping over there. And it's the usual, again, Samsung UI that they use for the tablets. They don't use the four-tab kind of thing like they do on the phones. So first nice thing about this is storage. As you can see here, we have 16 gigs. The, the Wi-Fi version of this tablet has only 8 gigs of internal storage. Granted, you do have a micro SD card slot to augment that, and that's compatible with SDXC cards up to 64 gigs. But still, it's nice to have some more internal storage. 16 gigs right here, and you can see that we put 1.1 gigs of our own stuff on here. There's some cache files, not very much there. So we actually have 10.7 gigs available for our use. Beyond that, there's no surprises here. All of our usual settings are available that we'd expect to see from Samsung. Then we have their customized launcher. You have all apps here. Then you can tab over to widgets and you can look at just things that you've downloaded right there. Sprint hasn't added much in the way of software on this, so it's pretty much as Samsung issues it if you get the Wi-Fi only model. So for pricing, let's talk about that for a minute. 
So for pricing, let's cover that first. If you get the Wi-Fi only version, then it's $199 and that gets you the 8 gigs of storage model. The Sprint version is $299. Now if you get a contract and you want to subsidize it, you can get it for $49. So that makes it pretty affordable, certainly for those of you who covet the iPad but really don't have that kind of money to spend, this is a lot less expensive. Of course, you're not getting all the high-end amenities here, though. This is definitely the improved version. The display, it's not bad. It's reason it's colorful, certainly. It's reasonably sharp, but 1024 by 600 resolution. I can't remember the last time we saw a name-brand tablet that had that low resolution. Compared to the Kindle Fire HDX, which is 229, and it has full HD resolution, and the new Nexus 7 2013 edition, well, it just pales in comparison, obviously, to those with their full HD displays. Again, you're giving up on the cameras as well. The CPU on this is a Qualcomm Snapdragon 400 clocked at 1.7 gigahertz. So that's actually an improvement over the 1.2 gigahertz Marvel CPU that's used in the Wi-Fi only version. That is really not a fast CPU. The Snapdragon 400 is decent, obviously. It's not going to beat the Snapdragon 800 or the Tegra 4 or anything like that. But for a tablet in this price range, that's not too bad. And that gets you Adreno 305 graphics. Now, that's getting a little bit dated, and we'll see on the graphics benchmarks, it actually doesn't do as well as just on straight computational benchmarks. But it's certainly adequate for all the casual games out there, and for more, um, shall we say, mid to low level device friendly games like Dead Trigger, Dead Trigger 2. If you're doing Real Racing 3, you'll see some frame skips on this, to give you an idea, for those games that are the most demanding. And speaking of the Nexus 7, here we have it. This is the latest edition model with its very long, tall form factor. So you can see the difference there. A little bit taller, a sharper display, nice IPS display on our Nexus. And side by side, the Nexus is looking a little bit slimmer. But if you want it on Sprint, then the Galaxy is looking good. And here we have it next to the iPad mini with Retina display, which is $399 and add $130 more on that if you want the Sprint version. So obviously a lot more expensive. Also a somewhat bigger tablet, different screen ratio, 4x3 versus 16x9. So it's going to be a wider device and it just has a little bit bigger screen on it. So on the device, we get the old WebKit web browser, which is kind of obnoxiously customized with this toolbar down here, which probably many of you don't want. Happily, it actually gets its own little icon now, so you can get rid of it if you want. You can turn it off, and that's called the Lumen Toolbar right there. So we'll go to Settings, and we'll say Go Away. We don't want you anymore. And there is our unmolested web browser now. Good times there. You also get the Chrome web browser on here. You get Polaris Office, the full version, so you can view, edit, and create MS Office documents. If you want to create one, there it is. You can see up to 2007 format compatibility wise for those. Standard all Google applications on here. You have your Gmail, your email, everything that you would expect. Google Maps, and yes, this has a GPS. Anything with 3G and 4G LTE, generally speaking, will have a GPS. Samsung's applications, we have their watch on for your TV, AV remote, and content discovery going on and it does more than TV by the way in case you're not familiar with that controls all your home theater AV gear we have Samsung's memo application here their group play application as well we have Samsung S voice yeah, not the best voice control I like Google's better myself they have their own video player because it supports some more formats that the standard gallery app doesn't S translator which actually does a pretty good job of translating language and lookout security as well for antivirus solutions. So how about data speeds? We're going to test this out right now. Overcast day here. Sprint's network is, I would call it a tweener. It's not in its infancy anymore, but they have a lot more room to grow. They were late to roll out their LTE network, as was T-Mobile, so we'll see how they do here. So far that's looking about typical for Sprint in our Dallas area. Here we might hit eight and a half megabit per second down we'll probably see about six up we'll find out real soon a lot slower than AT&T and Verizon in our area but if you're a Sprint customer you already know what kind of service you're going to get from them so you're wise you're the one that's going to be wisest to that decision of course it has dual band Wi-Fi as well so you don't have to rely on LTE all the time Bluetooth and as I mentioned it has that GPS too 
And there are our final numbers there for that test. 8 megabit per second down, almost 7 up. Now TouchWiz is known for inducing some lag, but honestly, in terms of navigating the interface so far, it's been fine. Application launch times are pretty good on this. We're going to launch Dead Trigger in a minute, so you can see the web browser was obviously fine. In terms of synthetic benchmarks on Quadrant, it scored a pretty hardy 84.38 for, for a Snapdragon 400 CPU. That's pretty good. 3 d Mark. Ice Storm Extreme was 28.94. That's not a real compelling number there. So that's what tells us that you're not going to want to play Asphalt 8 on this. Probably if you're seriously into 3D gaming, you're going to want something with a better GPU in it. Graphics Bench 2.7 for the Egypt 2.5 off-screen test, 17 frames per second. Again, nothing to write home about there. On Tutu, which is a little bit more oriented towards CPU testing, 20,074. That's quite good. Sun Spider was 995, which is a pretty hardy number also. Yeah, the fast devices may score in the 400s, but then again, some smartphones that are still in use today are scoring at 2,000, and lower numbers are better there. So 995, not too bad at all. Tablet has a 4,000 milliamp battery that is sealed on si inside. Unlike Galaxy phones, this does not come off. And Sprint says it's good for about six hours of actual use time. LTE is a hungry beast, so you might actually get better mileage on this with Wi-Fi. Most people don't sit and use their tablet for that many hours straight. And if you're doing something like ebook reading, you can turn off your wireless radios and you can certainly extend that. In our test, it actually has managed closer to seven and a half hours. And that's with leaving the LTE radio on, but not active the whole time. Now, if you're watching videos, streaming videos the whole time, if you're doing Skype video chat, that's a different story. Those are going to consume battery power a lot more quickly. And this is Samsung's usual very good keyboard here. you got a little number row up top. Turn it this way, get a bigger experience. And by the way, if you, if you really find that annoying there, the little pull out to do multitasking, you're not using it, press and hold the back button and it'll make it go away. So there you go. We'll test some video playback by visiting mobiletechreview.com or our website. And we're doing this over Sprint's LTE network right now. We are not using Wi-Fi, so we'll also be testing out their network. So just to be a little contrary, we'll look at our iPad mini with retina display review and test out the video review there to see how it plays. So we'll see if Sprint's connection holds up, and we're going to test uh, the HTML5 version of this video review. It's playing okay. We're, we're seeing the little buffering symbol there, the little twirly circle, but it's actually playing fine despite the fact that it's doing that. And now we switched over to Wi Fi and we got rid of our little buffering circle. So yes, you can do things like Netflix with this, YouTube video, not a problem. It's certainly got a fast enough processor, that 1.7 GHz Snapdragon 400. And lastly, we're going to test out Dead Trigger 2, a nice zombie shooting game that plays well in a variety of hardware. Cutscenes look pretty good. It's not really a, that bad a display given the low resolution. It looks better than you might guess. It's only as ultra sharp as Samsung's higher resolution tablets like the Note 10.1 2014 edition. Or even the Nexus 7 2013 edition, but not bad. Alright, so here we are in actual gameplay now. Alright, so here we are looking for some more zombies. I think ooh, one's chewing on my back, but that's okay. But the gameplay itself is quite good. And the graphics are nice looking too.
So that's Dead Trigger 2 on the Samsung Galaxy Tab 3 7.0, the Sprint Edition, with a faster CPU. So that's the Galaxy Tab 3 7.0, the Sprint Edition. It's available now, and if you're looking for an affordable and portable tablet, obviously this is it. It doesn't have the highest end specs, but it has some nice features. Like I said, that micro SD card slot, the TV remote control. So it's worth a look. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Be sure to visit our website for the full review, and don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.